Right, now we need to finish off this average thing. So, um, this should be fairly easy. Let's change this to string, let's say, uh, av, uh, well, yeah, let's say average amperage. Average amperage. Oops, what have I done there? Average amperage, I forgot a bracket. Okay. Average amperage. Save that. Now, of course, we need the average amperage um, variable. So, let's put this over here. It would have to go here, I'd imagine. Oops, I've not copied it. Hang on a sec. Average amperage. Actually, what I think I'll do is I'll say um, sum. Sum amperage. So, sum of amperage equals, no, plus equals amperage. So that's all of the averages, all, no sorry, all of the amperages all added together since the start. So sum amperage, we need to put that up here. Sum amperage float sum amperage. So each sample um, it's added to this value here. So for example if it's one amp and then the next second it's one amp and the next second it's one amp this value here would be three amps because it's the sum of all the amperages added together and now to get the mean or the average you'd get all of the amperages all added together and divided by the amount of samples now because we're taking one sample every second that's pretty easy so we'll get the time um, in seconds and divide this by the amount of seconds that should be okay so let's go back down here. Um, control T, Control S, and we need average amperage, I suppose. So let's make another one over here. Average amperage. Average amperage, and the average amperage. would be the sum divided by the time but it will be the time divided by um, 1000 because you'd want the amount of seconds so that's in milliseconds divided by a thousand to get the amount of seconds so you'd get the sum of all of the amperages added together divided by the amount of seconds and that would give us well obviously that's the amount of samples so that's that's the sum that's the amount of samples so therefore that would be the mean or the average and I forgot a semicolon okay and then we need well we'll put that in there and let's give it another try so upload let's see what happens Okay, so now we've got the voltage, the current amperage, the time, and the average amount of amps. And what should happen here is that as the voltage of the cell reduces over time due to the load, the amount of amps will go lower and lower and lower and lower. Right, I've let this thing run for three minutes now, and I'm just monitoring the values and seeing if they make sense. And they do seem to make sense. So um, I'm happy to carry on. So what do we need now? There's quite a lot of things that we still need to do. But one thing that strikes me is um, it's important that this thing knows when to stop. And we don't want to come up to it and, and press a button to make it stop, do we? We want it to stop when it hits a certain voltage. So when the voltage gets lower than a certain amount, we want it to turn off and stop. We want it to turn the transistors off and don't put any more load on the cell because we don't want to discharge our cell too much, we just want to know its capacity. We don't want to destroy it. So I need to go back to the PC and we need to do some more coding. Okay, the normal voltage of a normal lithium-ion cell is 3.6 volts, sometimes 3.7, but I'm going to go for 3.6. And the fully charged voltage of a lithium-ion cell is 4.2 volts. 
So 4.2 volts divide, uh, sorry, take away 3.6 volts is 0 0.6 volts. So if you get the nominal voltage, which is supposed to be halfway, and take away 0 0.6 volts, that leaves with 3 volts. So 3 volts is going to be my cutoff voltage or my minimum voltage. So what I need to do is, in the loop, if the voltage is 3 volts or less, then we need to, um, to turn off the load. So we want to say, if BV... If BV um, equals or is less than 3, then control T, control S. I can't remember if that's the right way. It might be the other way around. I think it probably is. I think it's probably that way. That looks better. So if the battery voltage is less or equal to 3, then we want to set the pin high. The transistor pin, we want to set the transistor pin high. Or is it low? Actually, it might be it's probably low um, because it's uh, an NPN transistor. So, oh, there we go, digital pin high. So we want to set it low actually. So transistor pin. We need to digital right low, and that will turn off the transistors, which will then turn off the load. And at this point, I want to add an LED, so let's copy that and paste it in there. And let's say we want LED pin, and now we want to set the LED pin as high. And it could be a green LED, maybe, to say it's done. You can actually do this with a buzzer or anything else, really. But I'll just do it with an LED just to keep things easy. So digital right, LED pin high. So this is going to say, OK. It's done. We finished. So we need to go back up over here and find LED uh, transistor pin. Here we go. So define LED pin, and I suppose that could be three. Although I'm not exactly sure. Uh, it doesn't appear to be used. So LED pin three. So now we've got to wire an LED pin. Uh, sorry, an LED to pin three. There is something I've forgotten actually. This here, uh, we just need to copy this and repaste it because we need one for the the LED pin. So LED pin, control T, control S, and control U. Okay, back to the project. I've got a little yellow LED, and of course has two legs. The longer leg is plus, and the shorter leg is minus. So the longer is the anode, the shorter is the cathode. So I'm going to plug the anode into D3, and I'll just plug it into this rail. If your project isn't exactly the same as this, don't worry, but essentially it's going to go from D3 to ground. Now, the resistor, I've chosen about, a th it's about 300 ohms. This is actually 270 ohms, but it doesn't matter too much. You need something around 300 ohms, uh, give or take 10% or so, or maybe, maybe more than 10%. But this is just... I mean, it's just a limit the amount of current. This Arduino here is a 5 volt Arduino, and the forward voltage of these LEDs is around about 3 volts. Again, some LEDs are different. But anyway, if I put this resistor in, I've worked out that it will draw less than 20 milliamps, which is about right. I think it's probably more like 10 or whatever. I could get a calculator and work it out properly, but it doesn't matter too much. So anyway, um, it just so happens that I go from here to the ground rail, and I'm going to go from the ground rail to ground. And now, when D3 sets this high, um, the LED should glow. Something else we'll need to do is to make sure this thing switches off. So, let's put another variable in here. We'll have bool, bool, let's say, on on. So to start with we want on to be true, on equals true, and over here we want to say if on, oops what have I done there, if on then do all this, let's 
So if on, do all that. If it's not on, then just stop. So what do we want to do here? If the battery voltage is less or equal to that, then set on to false. Okay, and let's upload this. And what that should do, it should very crudely just halt everything. It should pause everything. It should pause the printing to the screen and everything will just freeze. So it'll switch the, the transistor off, switch the load off and it will just freeze as it is. So that's kind of what we want. So I've just reset the, uh, the little capacity tester. And you can see it's got low voltage. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a short across the battery or the cell. And this will quickly decrease. The voltage will decrease. And the idea is that I can quickly uh, get that value lower than 3. So I'll just short this together now. It may go rapidly, I'm not sure. Ah, there you go, 2.9. So now what it should have done, it should have turned both transistors off and it should have turned the LED on and it has turned the LED on so that's really good so we're really getting there with this project now so I'll just zoom out and show you it again so there you go that's the project up to now